If I had to sum up this pay-per-view in one word, it's a word that's being heavily used right now. I think you guys know this word. Um, it's mid. This was a mid pay-per-view. It wasn't the worst, but it definitely wasn't the best. It was literally right down the middle. It's not something that I will remember actively. There's only maybe a handful of things I will actually remember from this pay-per-view. We're going to talk about it as we go through my uh, my thoughts and opinions. But just mid. That's what sums up this pay-per-view. Mid for me. Let's get right into it. What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video, man. So, Elimination Chamber 2022, man. It's here. It's done. And we kind of got some matches uh, pretty much lined up for WrestleMania. Uh, some of the major ones. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be some more matches uh, on the way these next few weeks. But, uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Road to WrestleMania is only, you know, a few weeks away. So, uh, yeah, was this pay-per-view worth watching? Eh, not really, in my opinion. It's, it, you didn't really need to watch this pay-per-view. You didn't really miss too much. It was kind of a self-explanatory pay-per-view. That's why I say it's kind of mid for me, because it's like, I'm not going to go back and watch this. This is not one of those pay-per-views where I can feel myself saying, hey, I want to go back and watch this match. There's not one single match on here I actually want to go back and watch. There's moments Little highlights, but there's not one single match I actually want to go back and watch. Uh, this this thoughts and opinion uh, video is going to be going by quick because the matches were self-explanatory. I think I pretty much guessed majority of how all these matches were going to play out in my preview and predictions. So uh, let's kind of knock this right out the park. Uh, the Miz versus Rey Mysterio. I didn't see that match. We were still setting up the stream when we got to the studio on the Clutch Going Roll page. Shout out to everyone that was there during the stream. We had a good time. You guys made this pay-per-view a lot hella more, uh, a hell of a lot more entertaining. So didn't really watch this match, but apparently uh, Ray did win the match. And uh, also, I guess uh, the feud's not over. Uh, I, I believe the Miz is supposed to be getting some backup to face them again probably at wrestlemania i'm just tired of the miz he's losing matches i don't care maybe somebody care i just don't care i don't care i i don't care who he's feuding with it's just it's like whatever cool so um, i'm guessing they're continuing the feud roman versus goldberg i called it i said this match should be the very first match of the night and it was the very first match of the night. The Miz and uh, and uh, Rey Mysterio. That was pre-show. This was the very first match, and it was it's exactly what I needed it to be. It didn't take too long. Uh, I thought it was going to be a squash match, as in Roman squashing Goldberg, but it wasn't. Uh, Goldberg got a couple offensive moves in. He started <laughs> bleeding, not like relatively quickly at, quickly at the top of his head, but I like it. I like Roman didn't just beat him with a spear or anything like that. He choked him out. He sent him to the gulags. He made him pass out. Boom, boom, boom. Sent him home. That should be it. No more. That's how this match should have ended. I'm glad they got that right. So, hey, Goldberg passing out because Roman sent him to the gulag. I'm cool with it. Fine with me, man. Um, uh, that's all I really wanted to happen. Either him getting squashed or him being eviscerated and he 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 pat he made him pass out so cool goldberg thank you for what you've done in the past but your services is no longer needed man just take your payday relax and you know just chill with your family bro you've done enough in this industry uh you've done a lot of good you've done some questionable things you know booking wise in the past few years i think it's just it's okay i think we can all can just Goldberg can hang it up. It's cool. It's fine. So, right person won there. Cool. Um, Let's see. The next match was the Women's Elimination Chamber match. Uh, <clears throat> to be honest with you, that match was okay. It was it was decent. It, it, it's not something, once again, I'm going to just go back and watch, rewatch. It wasn't really anything that was like, for me, it wasn't awesome. I know the crowd was chanting, this is awesome. It was okay. It was, I think I gave that match like a 7. It's a 7 out of 10. It, it was okay. The right person won, and I think that's why I graded it higher. There were some interesting things. Seeing Alexa Bliss out there 
was cool. I don't know if she was, you know, it doesn't seem like she had the fiend powers anymore, but it, it still seemed like there was like a little bit of it that she had. They had her pod custom made with a fucking swing in it. I, I thought that was kind of cringe. So I don't know where they're taking her character. Um, I mean, she looked okay in the ring. I've never been a Alexa Bliss fan, so she was okay. I just, I'm just glad they kept the, the superpowers away. That's the only thing I cared about. Um, but the right person won. Bianca Belair won. I, I figured that was gonna happen, so they can set up Bianca versus Becky at WrestleMania, which I'm, I'm more, you know, excited to see. You know, that's that's something that I'm, I'm really interested in seeing. So that's that's pretty much what that was. So I was okay with what we got there, but. It's not something that I would go back and watch. Um, we got Ronda Rousey, Naomi versus Charlotte Flair and Sonya Deville. I did not care for this match. I'm just be honest with you. I, <sighs> Jesus, this match was... Uh, it had some entertaining moments, but I was just really watching the chat, chopping it up with you guys. I just didn't care. The whole, I can beat you with one arm tied behind my back, that was so kind of, eh. It was... It was I mean, legitimately, she probably could beat everyone <laughs> in the women's division and probably some in the men's division. Ronda Rousey, she could possibly do that <laughs> legitimately with one arm tied behind her back. But I just, it, I didn't care. I, I honestly didn't care. You know, I, I did like when uh, Naomi was tagged in. I liked her offensive moves and, you know, how, you know, how she was, how she was really, you know, kind of making some ways for herself after having such a good match between Charlotte on SmackDown recently. And, uh, you know, I was I was more interested in how she would do in the match. And she did pretty well. But outside of that, I didn't care. This does not hype me up to see Charlotte and, and Ronda at WrestleMania this year. I'm sorry. Hell, even the whole gimmick of the one arm tied behind your back, it, it really wasn't working majority of the match because the rope wasn't that tight. So she was able to, a lot of times to just have her arm in front of her on the side of her. It just, it was just kind of, I, I didn't care. I didn't. So yeah, that, that, that was a definition of a, it wasn't awful, but it wasn't something I, I really will go back and watch. So, you know, it was, it was, it was definitely mid for me. Um, the next match, Drew versus Mad Cat Moss, of course, Baron Corbin or Happy Corbin was there ringside. Uh, once again, this match was kind of mid for me as well. Uh, I really wish, you know, he um, Drew McIntyre could possibly get out of this feud relatively soon. I will say, Matt Cat Moss, that that spot, you know, the spot where Drew has the opponent's legs and then he slams them face forward, where it looks like Matt Cat Moss was, you know, kind of over-rotating or had his head kind of, at the wrong angle. I think he was over rotating and that he landed on the top of his head. Oh my God, that was brutal. That was the highlight of the match and that wasn't even supposed to happen. That was definitely a botch. I don't know how he's standing. I, I cannot, I don't know how he's standing. I don't know how he finished that match. It looked like he definitely, oh my God, that was brutal. If you haven't seen that, I, I'm glad he's okay, but that was Oh, my. The way he landed on his neck. Oh, my. Sheesh. That was probably the highlight of that match. Obviously, it was a botch. But, uh, yeah. Uh, the right person won. Drew. Drew won the match. Um, of course, it looks like they're probably going to set up something between Drew and uh, Happy Corbin or whatever. At, probably at WrestleMania. So, do I really care for that either? No. I just want this to be done and over with so Drew can move on to something better. Once again, outside of that moment. The match was, it was okay. I'm just be honest with you. Um, Becky Lynch uh, versus Lita. Lita was going to lose this match. We all knew. I will say uh, Lita had a nice showing. For someone that hadn't really wrestled a full full match, an actual solo match, not being in a, a Women's Royal Rumble, an actual solo match with someone, she did okay. She did okay. She, was, she, was, she looked good out there in the ring. I wasn't as invested as I wanted to be because it was a short build. They literally came up with this build right after uh, the Royal Rumble. And she was just like, yeah, you, you know what? I, I want to face you. 
I want to face you at the next pay-per-view. Like, that's literally how this match was set up. So you knew what was going to happen. But um, it was cool. It was cool. I don't know if that's going to be Lita's last match. The way they set it up, uh, potentially it could be her last match in WWE. Uh, this was just a maybe a one-off situation. Who knows? But it was okay. It's nothing that I'm going to go back and watch. It was, it was okay. It was the middle of the road for me. Uh, they did what they needed to do. We know the story that we're also trying to see is Becky versus Bianca. So the right person won here again, Becky Lynch. Okie dokie. Now, here's the funny. This is the best match of the night. 10 out of 10. So the Viking Raiders, they're coming out. They're about to have a tag team match with the Usos. The Usos go mega rogue and beat the holy hell out of them. Now, here's the thing. Someone pointed this out in my, in our chat. Now, if they would have beat them down with some steel chairs, then I could have understood why the match was canceled because they got brutal eyes. But they just street jumped them. That's it. They just jumped them, you know what I'm saying, hit a couple moves on them. The refs had to stop it. The match never happened. That's why it's a 10 out of 10. If they would have beat them with some weapons, I can understand, but I'm pretty sure they could have probably maybe – Maybe, like, try to get the match going, but I'm not mad at it. I am not mad at it at all. I think the match would have been probably entertaining, potentially maybe match of the night, but they were they were trying to get in and out. So, yeah, the match never happened. They beat them up. And, uh, yeah, 10 out of 10 match, best match of the night. Don't at me. <laughs> so, yeah, match never happened, man. <laughs> they beat them before the, the match could even start, man. They went mega rogue. And then, of course, the Elimination Chamber. This is this is what we're here to talk about. The Elimination Chamber match, man. Woo! Uh, for the men's. I was really hoping this match would be much better than what it was. I really was. The people in this match, you can only expect it to be great. And it was starting off pretty good. It wasn't until Austin Theory was... Power bombed, I want to say, a thrown through one of the the uh, pods where Bobby Lashley was in, and then Bobby Lashley ended up catching a concussion or something. It's a work, obviously. So he ended up getting escorted out the match. When that happened, I knew, oh, it's over. Brock is winning this. It's over. They only did that to protect Bobby, or to can potentially extend the feud. Once that was done, all of a sudden, it's, you know, Brock's like, yo, bro, I'm not about to wait no more. Brock trying to, you know, trying to get in and cause carnage. He pulls a Goldberg and uh, proceeds to kick his way out. Kicks his way out. And because uh, the, the the light went to Bobby's pod, but Bob, Bobby's already out the match. Go, Brock's like, I ain't waiting no more time. He kicks it open. And he, he he proceeds to literally kill everyone. This is the problem I have with this match. He literally destroyed everyone like they were chumps, bro. He made everyone look so weak. AJ Styles, F5, out of there. Seth Rollins, that surprised me because they have history. Seth Rollins, F5, out of there. I'm just like, oh, man, bro. Matt Riddle, non-factor, out of there, bro. The only person that was left was uh, <laughs> Austin Theory, bro. <laughs> I will say this about Austin Theory. He is a, he's a tough son of a bitch, man. My man literally got destroyed by Austin by Brock Lesnar put R.I.P. Austin Theory because Brock Lesnar legitimately killed him that first suplex onto the the matted floor that matted um area outside the ring oh my bro even though there's pads there you can tell the impact of the way he suplexed him the impact of that bro he, that was real pain. He wasn't selling that. That hurt. So imagine if the steel grates weren't there. The, the padding weren't there. Oh, he would have died then. But that suplex was brutal. He just uh, threw him. I was like, oh, he's dead. So 
Carson Theory, he's running around, which I found so funny. I've never seen that in the hell in a cell. Dude running at top speed to get away from Brock, and Brock is legitimately chasing him. So Austin Theory decides to climb up. I'm like, where you gonna go, bro? You, you ain't going nowhere. They ain't, I don't think I've never seen a scarier sight than Brock Lesnar climbing the side of an elimination chamber with such speed. Austin Theory is at the top. It took him a while to get up there because he hit he hit him with a low blow. He hit Brock Lesnar with a low blow. He hit him with some of his moves. Brock kicked out, and he was like, oh, fuck. I need to get the fuck up out of here because Brock's going to kill me, which rightfully so. So, Austin Theory climbing the, the, the side of the elimination chamber right next to a pod. And it took him a while to get to the top. Brock literally gets up and climbs that same height in like sec, like one or two seconds. The speed he was climbing at legitimately scared me for Austin Theory. Can you imagine you're climbing trying to get out of a situation and you see Brock right next to you that quick? Oh my God. They go to the top of the pod. He's banging his head on the pec plexiglass. I thought he was going to potentially throw him through it. I thought he was going to fall out of it. I was like, oh, my God, bro. And then all of a sudden, he picks him up for the F5. And I'm like, no way. He's not going to murder his, this, this young kid on television, right? Right? He's not going to do this on Peacock, right? Nope. He F5 that motherfucker off the top of the pod. All the way down to the to the to the 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 matted floor down below, and I was like, "Oh, he's dead." I, I've never seen that before. I've never seen an F five from that type of height. He literally threw him, survive. I, I that is the spot of the night. That is what I will remember this elimination chamber for. Austin Theory being murdered by Brock Lesnar. Once that happened, I was like, well, it's over. He's not kicking out of that. No one's kicking out of that. And as I said, one, two, three, it was done. And you have your new WWE champion, Brock Lesnar. That's the only thing that made that match great. Everything else, I just wasn't a big fan of. I wasn't a big fan of everyone getting squashed by Brock. I get it. But that, that whole little exchange with Austin Theory, Austin Theory, you a bad man for taking those bumps. Sheesh. But, um, yeah, and that was it. And it, it just left me really confused on what was the purpose of even having him win the Royal Rumble again. When you were ultimately going to give him the title back to ultimately set up the champion versus championship match at WrestleMania. I know why this match is happening because that is the marquee match. I don't think anybody wants us to see Brock versus Roman for the Universal Championship. No. If you were going to see it again, it needs to be higher stakes. And there's nothing higher than WWE champion versus universal champion. Winner takes all. That's that's WrestleMania. That's a WrestleMania worthy match. Simple as that. But my problem I have is why give Brock, Bobby the title for three weeks just to take it off of him? Now, I know what they're probably going to do because Bobby never competed in the match he never got pinned so they'll probably set up another match with brock versus bobby maybe for the wwe championship and brock will retain he will get his win back that way i think that's possibly what will happen i think they, they're gonna go with that maybe they do that for like maybe night one or maybe they do it before wrestlemania who knows but i do know bobby will be having another championship match at some point, he's just not going to win. Because ultimately, it's going to end up being Brock versus Roman. That's what they want. I just don't get the whole purpose. The Royal Rumble win that he got was wasted. Because it didn't matter. It, it really didn't matter. He was still going to main event WrestleMania. So you took that potential spot from somebody else that could have used it to literally give the title back to Brock. Hey. I don't know, man. I, I just think that was a bad move. If you're gonna, I'm fine with you, Brock keeping the title, but you shouldn't have just. There was no point in dropping it. If this was going to be the end result, you could have got the end result without him winning the Royal Rumble. That's just my opinion on it. But overall, like I said at the beginning of the show or beginning of this video, 
this pay-per-view for me was mid. It's not something I'm going to go back to remember other than Austin Theory being killed and Mad Cat Moss almost being killed as well. That's about it. Outside of that, I don't care for much of this. I'm not going to remember too much of this at all. Um, but yeah, uh, if I gave, I, I think I gave this pay-per-view a solid, uh, um, what did I give it? I think I gave it like a five out of 10. It was like a five out of 10 pay-per-view. I think I said that on the, on the live. I'm not sure, but I, I, I give it like a five out of 10. It was, it's not memorable by not even a slightest. So yeah, comment down below. Let me know. Did you guys enjoy this pay-per-view did you guys enjoy the outcomes of the matches what you rate this pay-per-view on a scale of one to ten and are you guys looking forward to what's happening at this year's wrestlemania with all the supposedly confirmed matches we have right now but i appreciate all the love and support road to 70k appreciate y'all keeping me see y'all next week peace